teacher round table show is live it's the dj round table show tell another dj it is eight o'clock the show. it is eight o'clock it is tuesday night do you know where your dj's at i know where i'm at i'm here with you yes it is another dj round table show and always got notifications coming at the right time just gotta love it uh Dwayne, welcome uh hey, we, got, we, we got some good crew here tonight uh people in and out as always you know again we have people working people doing things family and so forth so on but we always have great djs here and if you're a great dj thank you for being here thank you for watching we appreciate it we love you uh if you could do us a favor if you're watching here live on twitch Again, we're on Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock Central Time on Twitch. If you're watching live on Twitch, thank you so much. Make sure you say something in the chat, ask questions. If you are watching this on YouTube, the YouTube algorithm, that beast, that monster, that huge, giant wall that stops us from growing, I need your help. Please do me a favor. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, like the video, and make the bell icon. Plus, share the video with another DJ. Tell some other DJs about the channel, about the show. We love hearing from you guys, love hearing what's going on. And if you're new to the channel, thank you, welcome, and I hope you're enjoying yourself with everything on the channel. With that said, lots of fun stuff going on here tonight. As always, we have some great DJs here from coast to coast. North, South, East, West, and all in between. We have uh, you know, a lot of great people here who work very hard at what they do. Uh, this uh, past weekend, uh, I wanted to get your guys' take on this. I had a person who came up to me and said, hey, I was dancing all night. I really enjoyed what you did, but you didn't play any of my requests. And I'm like, I I'm sorry, I didn't play any requests. He put down two requests and he he didn't hear them or he wasn't there or whatever. And again, requests are not guarantees. Requests are requests. And if it fits, it fits. The two songs he picked were on, one was on the Do Not Playlist. One was another one that he put down that didn't really fit the dance floor. It would have fit better a cocktail or dinner, but not the dance floor. He still was out there dancing, having fun and enjoy himself. So my question to you is when you run into someone who puts a request in, what do you do? How do you go through the process? Do you look at this, the song? Do you try to get in as quickly as possible? If it fits, it works. If it doesn't fit, do you try to say, Hey, this won't work, but is there another request you have? So I'm going to start with Matt on this one. Cause Matt, I know you get some crazy requests out there in California, especially doing a lot of EDM. Mm -hmm. And someone comes up to you and says, hey, I want Freebird or something like that, something that doesn't fit your mood or fit the need of the wedding. How do you, you know, how do you deal with it? How do you make that person walk away happy? Again, my person was happy, but he was like a little disappointed that he didn't hear his two songs. Um, depends how persistent they are. Like if if it if the song doesn't fit like at all, like for example, on Sunday not Jewish wedding at all, but the groom wanted to get up in the chair or his friend said the groom wanted to get up in the chair. And I was like, ah, I like, <laughs> it's just an, ah, that's weird to, it's, you know, as a Jew, I feel weird playing the horror at a non-Jewish wedding. Um, it just seems kind of awkward, but so I like waited like 10 or 15 minutes. So I was like, yeah, I'll see if we can get to it. And then like, I asked the coordinator, I was like, can you like go check or ask somebody if like this is chill because like it seemed weird and uh but then i found like a good spot for it and it went over well of course but um that's like one of those that's just like i i play down people's requests sometimes where it's just like not at all gonna fit um but most of the time i'll just uh i don't know i don't get that many requests like i think i play good music and people vibe to it uh but when i do like if you're persistent you come up to me two or three times i'll play it for you like i had this kid at a wedding once and requested the same song like four times over the course of like an hour and I finally i'm like all right fine like here you go and uh he was happy so i try to make everybody 
happy uh, if you're persistent. If you come up once and you request something, like if it's a good request, I'll write it down or I'll try to remember it. If it's a bad request, I'll be like, you know, I'll say, oh, I'll try to get to that. But persistence is key. Bug me enough, then I'll just play it to get you out of my hair. Okay. And it, that's, that's when, you know, one of the things you can look at is, you know, how persistent someone is or. You drop, a, uh, you drop a 20 or a 50 or a hundred. I'll play that, that song right away. Yeah. I, I, money, yeah talks. money talks. You know, money, you know, for some people, it kind of greases everything, but like I said before, I, I, I saw the, I saw the person out there dancing. They were having fun. They enjoyed themselves. It's that they didn't, but again, it's 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 like you know, not sound bad. You're not you can't play every request because if you have 150 people, everyone asks for a song, plus you have the, the, all the other songs you got to go through. You may not have all the time in the world for them, or it may not fit. I mean, that again, someone comes and says, "Hey, I want Freebird in the middle of a your of an EDM set." You know, yeah, it could work, oh, but I'd say more toward the end of the night. You know, more toward that you know singing crowd kind of feel. But uh, it, it's always interesting how other people handle requests. When you uh, you don't you don't do a request sheet or an app or anything that for requests, you just have people come up and say, "Hey, do you write it down? Yeah. Do you write down on a sheet of paper?" Uh, sometimes. Um, usually, I have a pretty good memory. Um, but if I get like bombarded with requests, like I'll I'll have a little notepad, uh, like on my laptop where I'll uh, jot them down on. But uh, no, I tried using an app. It didn't really work. And I also don't really want to tell people like, hey, go to this website to request stuff. Like, just tell me what you want to hear. Like, uh, but I try to like my wedding on Thursday, they they asked all their guests to like submit song requests. So I have like 25 requests from their guests. And I'm like, and all of them are pretty mainstream stuff. So uh, I at least kind of have an idea of what the guests want to hear versus just the bride and groom because your bride and groom can dictate their playlist. But you could get there and it's yeah, not going to go over well, depending on the crowd. So, Well, that's why I feel reading the crowd is very important. So mm -hmm. that, that's, that's always a fun thing with a uh, request. So I'm going to go over to uh, DJ Brantley. I know he gets requests, uh, especially with some of the bar crowds. I think I've saw some people write the request across their forehead and come up to you a couple of times or other body parts. I'm not mentioning we're keeping everything G rated here, but um uh, what 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 really for requests for you? How do you handle that? How do you fine tune that? And do you try to get it on there, or what do you do? You got mute, unmute yourself. I had a real similar scenario. I'm um, to you with my wedding on Friday night, and there was this one guest who I finally she kept coming up to the front of the booth and saying, "You have to play this now." I'm like, "No, I'm not allowed to. You're lying." And so finally, I'm like, "You did the come here." put her right next to my do not playlist and the instructions for my bride and groom. And I'm like, I'm not allowed to, if you don't believe me, here is my list, but you have bugged me every time I've changed songs the entire night, you sit and stare at me on the dance floor. I'm not allowed to take requests. And actually, if you look at the list, this is your name, right? Yeah. You were one of the people they'd warned me about that I'm specifically not allowed to take requests from. So I have to ask you, is this your wedding day? No. And if it was would, was your wedding day, would you want the DJ being as hard-lined as I am to a guest like you're being to me? She's like, yeah, you're right, but you can't. I'm like, no, I will not break any of the things they've asked me to do for them. If you want, because this wedding is ending early, there's a 99.9% .9 chance I'm going to go take over the booth at Lacrosse Beer House, just like I'm going to do tomorrow night. You're welcome to come down there and dance, and I'll play all your requests because they're all things I would play in a club. But I can't play those here. You're sure you can't play Whopper Slut Me Out? No, I cannot. We are at a wedding. And when you get when I get like guests like that, I will literally bring them into the booth or outside of the booth and let them see that it's not me being a rude or abrasive to them. It's I'm not allowed. When it comes to requests I'm allowed to, I am honest to God, I think one of the only DJs I know of that I welcome every request you can give me because, one, it might be a song I get at a wedding that, oh, wait, I should be playing that back in my club sets 
or vice versa. I always want something to keep my sets moving along and keep them not this consistent same BS wedding, you know, garbage you get at every wedding. So I'm continually trying to do that. Like my wedding on Saturday, on Friday with this lady who was giving me a hard time, they were really not into heavy EDM, but like that golden era of EDM, you know, titanium clarity, don't you worry, child. And so I was able to really run that for about 90 minutes after the girl had finally realized that, okay, I can't ask anything. And a few of the songs she was asking about, I'm like, they're on the must playlist. I will get to them, but I can't, I, I'm not going that heavy right at 830 at night. We have grandparents here. We're not doing that. And when it comes to like the club side of it, it depends on the format. Like at Lacrosse Beer House, I have to now play technically 70% country, but you're lucky if you get 40% out of it. But I can't go and take that dive to start playing something like, you know, again, slut me out, WAP, when I'm supposed to be playing pop country and party jams like a college bar. So I follow the formats that I'm given and work in what I can. But on an I will honestly almost always play a request if it fits in my format. And I'm anal about it. Like if I was looking at my sheets from Saturday, uh, from my wedding Saturday, I write every request down. So if that produces the reaction that I want to see on a dance floor, put that in my back pocket. When I go sit down and do my entire weekend settle on the, uh, you know, go through everything from the weekend on Monday, I go through my song playlists and I try to, you know, go, oh yeah, that was a banger. Or if it really went down well, I will circle the song on my list so I know to add that to my regular rotation in my crates when I get home and start working for the next week. You know, the one thing is that, like, um, I've showed you guys before how Tracy and I do requests. We put a high boy up. We have a little sign we got from Amazon that changes the color. It, you know, and then we, it says song request here. Sheet of paper, you know, on a you know clipboard. Some pens, some hand sanitizer. We make a nice little area there. A little sign says, you know, what to do. It asks for, you know, artists and song name. And, you know, we get tons of sheets. And I go through the sheets and I look through it and I mark off the ones that I play. The ones I don't play, obviously, I don't mark. So it, it's, it's one of the things that I, tr I try to look at and try to be intelligent and see what will work for the group. But, yeah, when you get songs that, like, are offensive, to say the least, um, do you really going to play them? No. I, I And again, it, it's it's someone's special day at a wedding. A club is different than a wedding. A club, you could play something if the club is for that. If you have a, like you said, you have a country club, you can't drop that there. But if you had a no. more of a, a hip hop club that's doing more urban of a, of, a, of music, yeah, you could drop Cardi B. You could drop, you know, um, whoever you want to there because people are going to be like, and they're going to be like, Oh yeah, this is what I came here for. That's the vibe I came for versus, you know, you're at a wedding. No one wants to hear foul language at a wedding. Uh, and the DJs who do drop, you know, stuff like that. I'm, I'm sorry, but it's like, you're, you're not putting a client first. You're not making an elegant night. I don't care if it's at a, a Elks club or it's at Shea, whatever. Uh, it, 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 you should treat every single wedding the same and respect for the client. And see, with that, you know, in the dirty era or element of music, a lot of my couples really want that when they book me. So if you look at every one of my must playlists, they are very clear. Play the dirty version, play the dirty version. And when I have that pre-call with them before their day, we come to it, you know, I make sure my couples have an understanding that I'm not going straight for the jugular right out the gate. I want your 80-year-old grandma to dance. I want your the kids that you've invited to dance. And then right around the time we should be doing a garter toss, that's the time I will transition to doing heavier music. That fits what you want. But I'm not going to blow, unless you absolutely say, and I've had it happen to me, where a bride said, you are playing my neck, my back, first song after the spotlight dances. I want my mom to leave. And if she hears that song, she'll leave. All you ladies drop your, all you ladies pop your, put like, boom, her mom got up and took off. And then she walks right up to me. Mission accomplished. We can go back to the regular thing. Cool. And now one thing I'll add with, you know, requests, like how you have the notepad and all that. I don't want any of that. I want to talk to you. I want to hear you. And Mitch Taylor is the one who really got me into this mode of it. 
if I talk to you, I per you know, befriend you. If I make myself more personable to you, not and say for example, you're not married and looking in a couple of years, you're going to remember this. I want that person to person communication. It makes it so they don't feel you know. And part of it being when you do your intro to the guests as you walk out before the entrances and let them know who you are, what you're doing, and all that. I want them to be in, you know, feel comfortable talking to me and feel like I'm doing them justice or doing them the right way as I am for the couple. Because Mitch is the one who put it to me. We are always on stage. No matter how we cut, slice, or dice it, the second we get in that booth with people around us, that is our stage. How we utilize it for future events is on us and endearing myself to each person that comes up to a request. Yeah, I will write every request down. Am I going to play it? Oh, no. But I want them to feel like I'm doing something for them, making them a part of this day the best I can. That's why I don't leave that paper out there. Versus I do, I do, so I don't feel people feel they're being judged. They have the request, they put their song down, they get to put anything they want to in there. And there, no one's saying, oh, well, you requested this, you're a bad person. So that, that's the other thing is psych, psych, psychologically, which way do you go? Um, I'm going to go back to uh, DJ uh, Salsa to, to Matt. Um, uh, <laughs> Fred, the uh, the godson, uh, said uh, he thinks that uh, you play WAP at every single uh, wedding. I've never played WAP. As... I think I've played it once by request at a wedding. But other than that, no. I mean, it's not a – I don't really – I don't play like dirty. I mean, I, I'm like you. I mean, I default to clean. I download like, I mean, most of the time, like the music that I'm downloading doesn't really, isn't super profane any, anyway. But uh, for all the hip hop stuff I download, I always download a clean and a dirty version um, because I'll get those every once in a while that want like the dirty versions. But honestly, like, does anybody care if it's clean? Like, no. Um, does anybody care if like it's dirty because there is no clean version out there? Again, no. Um, so. I will say that people do care if they want the dirty version, they're oh, going to yeah. the dirty lyric and they don't oh, yeah. want the clean version. I've gotten looks when I play get low, the clean version. <laughs> and like, Oh, okay. I guess we're here now. Time to play the real versions of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, um, next episode, like, uh, that one, uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Like you, you can't play the clean version of that. That's just. You just can't. Yes, who's back in the mother? <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? I would rather play the clean version than the dirty version any of the week because that way I don't offend no one and no one gets mad at me. Uh, Fred says a few other things here. Uh, the worst is when someone comes up to you uh, to uh, comes up to you and tells you to change a song when the dance floor is popping off. Yeah, I hate that. Like when somebody thinks like that that it's there, like, oh, uh, wait. again, I had a remember when I, a couple weeks ago when I said some guy came up and said, turn this white off. The white and, stuff uh, off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the dance, the bride and groom were out there screaming at the top of their lungs, having the time of their lives with their friends. And I kind of just lotioned them like, okay, you know, go tell them. And and but, uh, that that's the thing is again he 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 or she or whoever wants whatever they want, it's not their event. It's it's right. that couple right there's wedding, and that's who we're working for. Um, Fred also agrees. Uh, know the vibe and those websites where couples used to make um, an account are popular. But I'd rather couples be able to get uh, into. Um, I rather have get info uh, like requests whatever way they prefer uh, more. And again, that's the thing is that, you know, some people prefer websites, some people prefer other ways. Uh, he also said, oh, oh darn, uh, Brentley called them out uh, like that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if there's a bad request, make sure that you announce and point to whoever requested it. I'll tell you, uh, sometimes to request, if I get a request, um, I don't even call the person out, but it's, it's say clear the dance floor and have them dance that song. Especially if someone comes up and asks like for a chicken dance or something like that a bunch of times. It's not like a family dance. You ask for a chicken have dance. You ever, you want it. Has anyone, 
Has anyone here actually ever played the chicken dance? I've never. I don't even have that song. I don't have that file. I, I have it. I, I play yeah. it every so often. Usually, it's because a family, the couple, wants it for their family dance, their dad, their mom, whatever. They grew up around the uh, around the kitchen table, whatever it is. It's not yeah. a default, but you get people request it. I take that back. I did drop the dun 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 for Oktoberfest before <laughs> I did an EDM dubstep drop. There you go. So, uh, I, Taylor, I had to. So, Taylor and Jordan, uh, how do you guys deal with requests? What do you guys What do you guys do? I just tell them I'll see if I have it, and I put it in my side list on Virtual DJ. And if I get to it, I get to it. I don't use that side list. I don't like taking up precious real estate off my screen. The side list is easy. It, you don't you don't take much it less. Just, it's it's like you it know takes, take any it goes, in. It goes in and out. I'll I'll show you all my perfectly aligned and the most beautiful setup of virtual DJ ever. I'll take a screenshot and Buddy can send it to everybody to show you. Oh please, how I gotta see this. O C D I M. It is absolutely perfect. You can see everything, every vital piece of information, and opening anything up or changing. I have all of my exact spacing in the little comments field in the settings. Like I have the entire thing copied because if I move something by a hair, I will not be able to DJ again. Like it has to be that exact way. And I have the, the little, uh, the thing that bugged that uh, heck out of me. If you accidentally like uh, do like a pinch, if you have a MacBook on the, um, where the waveforms are, it'll zoom in. I can't stand that. Like I want my waveforms the exact same. I, I need 32 beats across the screen at one time. I can I cannot stand if anything gets changed. It drives me insane. I'm so OCD about that. So uh, I will show you guys the perfect virtual DJ setup. It does not have room for a side side view. Okay, back to what I was saying. I use a side <laughs> list um, to put requests down and I just tell them I'll get to it <laughs> if I can no. or if I have it. I mean, I don't know. As far as bad requests on Saturday, I did get, it was the groom's mom though and i didn't want to play it but then she asked again in front of the groom was p diddy um every breath i take i, I don't know or i'll be missing, yeah, you, I'll missing, be missing you. you and yeah. i'm just like that that is not wedding vibes for one um and then i, I kind of was hoping she would forget and she didn't and i did have to play it and i did you know this one goes out to colin's mom <laughs> By the way, if you're going to play the version of TikTok, Kesha has released the FP Diddy version now. And it was out like 48 hours later. And I've got, <laughs> I've got it. I had, And I was dumb enough not paying attention on Saturday that it played the wake up every morning feeling like P. Diddy. And everybody at the wedding was went like, oh. And I'm like. I would just, like, yeah, I would have queued past that part. I didn't, I didn't even think about it because I'm just so used to seeing TikTok. Drop my cue point, slam and go. And didn't even realize I'd grabbed the old version. You know, you know what? It, 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 it's it's if someone wants a different version than the original, it, again, it, it's it's a reference. You gotta remember it's the song, redoing a song or change editing a song for because someone did something wrong. Again, he's I'm not defending anyone, I'm not saying anything, but there's a lot of artists out there that done bad things. People need to yeah. separate the art from the artists. And they say, okay, this artist did something bad. And again, throughout history, throughout rock and roll, throughout 80s, 70s, the 60s, 80s, 90s, today, there are people who have done things. And whatever they're accused of or they have done or, or, or they're getting in trouble for, that's a bad thing. But the art they created is separate from the artists. And that's the way people have to look at it. <laughs> I mean, Michael Jackson. Don't to bother me. Kids. I mean, I, I can think of one punk artist that his life was everything he sang about did, Gigi Allen. If you don't know him, look him up. The dude was a train wreck and a half, but there was no separation of his musical art to his life. It was all one big S show. Well, again, if, if he wants to sing about whatever, again, this is something that we as DJs can choose should we play this or not yeah. play this? And if it's something that is offensive, that has you know bad things in there, we need to choose what's best for the client and do like Matt does and just go ahead and play it. <laughs> I, 
I do find uh, that we've been kind of asking the couples to do that website thing where you ask your your guest to submit like a a song with the RSVP or something, and that does seem to uh, work out better for requests or not getting so many requests. They don't being, bother you as much because you're yeah. playing the song they were going to request it because and you can wean them out beforehand. Make sure you're prepared with them. So we'll, we'll have a, a folder here's, called guest requests. Here, here's here's two bad things with that. We, when 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 customers, clients go ask their guests what songs, give us two songs you got here. They have to comprise and do a bunch of work and filter that through because a lot of times people ask, oh, I want cha cha slide. Oh, this person has cha cha slide. This person has. They may have 20 people requesting the same song. So they got to filter through. And say, okay, fine, great, here's a song. It puts a lot of work on them. Plus, if that person doesn't hear it, they won't hear the request. Why well, I said a request is a couple. You didn't play it. Why do you not play it? That's what you run into. So we, Tracy and I, tell people don't do that. Let them request at the wedding because then they, they're going to request for stuff anyways because they're going to hear a song and think, oh, I forgot about that song. Oh, you know what reminds me of this song is this song. So that's the other thing is that you're 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 trying to bring them onto a, a kind of a pathway or a highway, and they're you're they're hearing one song they're like oh I got to hear this oh now I got to hear that, <clears throat> like uh, Saturday, I played to believe. Then I had on the sheet I had three or four people requesting Cascada every time we touch. So because believe brought that and Cascada a lot of times I play that. Because people love that, and they sing it on top of their lungs. They jump up and down. They do the whole nine yards. But the thing is that, again, they they heard the one, and I was going to play Cascada anyways. But they, they're like, all oh, these requests, and this sheet, Cascada, every time we touch, every time we touch, every time we touch. And it's like, okay, fine, great. you know. But I much rather had the people do that there than waste our couple's times. So that's the other thing. That, that's the way I look at it. Again, everybody can do whatever they want to. I'm, just, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just telling you how, what I think I have it as. And that's the thing is that, you know, again, you and your wife, uh, Jordan, you have to look at what's best for your business and what's best for you guys at there. Just like Brantley, just like Salsa's, just like Cool Thing. I know he gets a lot of requests. And, oh, yeah. And how do you Definitely. how do you handle your requests? Well, I basically play them. But if it's not on this flash drive, because it's where my entire library is. I won't play it because I won't have it. And most of it, you know, most of the Ow. time, the requests come from, you know, little kids who want to hear their favorite kind of music. Mostly it's hip hop. Most of it's like alternative music. So I got asked for Enemy by Imagine Dragons. They wanted um, Shadow by Livingston and all that stuff. So I actually had some of those songs and I play them. I'm I'm never going to say no to anybody who asks for a request. You should. No, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to be Nobody, that. I don't I don't think anyone should ever play Imagine Dragons. They're the worst band ever. No, they're not. Well, Horrible. again, that that's that that's according to you. Imagine yeah. Dragons they music is so songs. bad. Maybe if you, maybe I mean, you see the not. SNL skit about them? The SNL skit about them was hilarious. All right, all right. Who here <laughs> Who here thinks the Magic Dragon is an okay band? Oh, All right. You guys Who here thinks okay, yeah. uh, Magic Dragon stinks? They uh, they repulse me. Well, it's it's See, even, it's, yeah. it's, it's fifty they're, fifty. They're Look, we right now. Unless, unless in with like, Bastille, Brad comes in, and he's, in that's with, what he's thinking. <laughs> if we want to talk about terrible bands, let's talk about Thirty Seconds to Mars. They're terrible. Oh, come on. Terrible. Oh, I can't stand oh, them. Oh, you, can't hate no. you got people who don't like Nickelback. And again, Nickelback. Oh my God, I love Nickelback. Yeah, Ever since the documentary came out, I'm a Nickelback fan. There's, there's I no remember. Wait, wait, Brentley, Brentley, turn on. Turn on, Brentley. <laughs> Rockstar. <laughs> when it comes to Nickelback, I start at $50. If you got less than 50 you ain't hearing that. Uh-uh, No. <laughs> I oh, play Rockstar during I, cocktail I, I hour because a lot of people either they, they sing a lot to it. Dad Rock, Peak Dad Rock, it's Peak Dad Rock. It's awesome. Rockstar is a great song. Incubus, Lincoln Park, Stained, Disturbed, any of that. Request. Those are all good. We're bands. starting at fifty dollars. I love Disturbed. 
<laughs> oh, come I'm on. Actually, down I, the sickness? Come on. Yeah. I love Disturbed. They're so good. I would Tracy love loves Disturbed. All Tracy goes to see Slipknot. Tracy goes Here. to see Godsmack. That's Tracy's <laughs> music. Oh, Godsmack. Voodoo. <laughs> if you want to listen to the metal I listen to, <laughs> Black Dahlia Murder, Weed Eater, <laughs> Uncle Acid and the Deadbeats, Sabbath. Uh, God, a lot of that stoner and doom stuff is what I will listen to. That you know, some of that, you know, some of that stuff sounds really from like yeah, yeah. 97, 98 <laughs> until present. Outside of maybe a couple songs from Buck Cherry, you could just get rid of it all, and I would be a happy camper. Just, oh come I mean, on, man! Yeah, oh, I'm not kidding. For Halloween. Lincoln Park, yeah, come Lincoln on! Park is good. Well done. Lincoln That's Lincoln a great Park. song. I will be yeah. the musician myself who's toured and done warp tour and things like that. Any clown can play and drop D tuning. I said it. Thank you. But it takes here, even go back to the Sabbath era or from the 80s, Dockett or anything like that. All those guys knew how to play their instruments. These kids nowadays, a couple drop strings. Oh, I'm a rock star. You don't even know the pentatonic scale. Get out of here with that. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. <laughs> it might be a pretentious bluegrass musician. Yeah, yeah. But New Lincoln yeah, Park. No. Have you heard New Lincoln Park though? I they, love New Lincoln Park. Oh, love it. I love oh, it. It's, I, I didn't old <laughs> stuff. I didn't at first, but oh. I it I grew like on me. I really like it. She and can, you can kind of well, in, in let's, uh, let's settle this with a person who knows more music than anything here. They actually taught music in school, <laughs> Mr. Wait. Dixon. Who has many years of being a music teacher, Mr. Dixon? I don't think he taught Dwayne. Lincoln Park, though. <laughs> Dwayne. <laughs> again, again, Nick, uh, Nickelback and stuff like that. Again, am I correct? They're 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 okay, man. You know, I did not like, you know. I never again. You can play my, some uh, of your stuff. It's I, not I a problem, right? My, I never it's, finished my thoughts. Oh, 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 well, hold on one second. Cool thing. What do you what do you uh, think, Wayne? I don't really listen to them. So it's like closest thing to rock I would say I get to would be Imagine Dragon. Um, um I like Limp Biscuit at one time. Um those kind of things. The ones that those little crossover ones that with the hip hop and the rock, those are the ones that I kinda like got into. There you go. So, and I'll, I'll get back to your run second, Dwayne. I want the I want the hunter to finish up his thought, but I want to know what, how you take care of your requests. And I know you use an app, which I know some people don't want to use an app. Some people don't mind an app, and I have my sheets. Cool thing. Finish up your thought. Well, I as far as managing my requests, I just handle them one at a time. I you know I play one at a time. I don't really use paper. I don't use an app. I don't use any of that stuff. I just look up on my controller that very second and I queue it up in one of my decks. That's so all I let, let's say you're playing an EDM set, you're channeling your inner mat and you're playing you know, EDM set and then someone comes and says, hey, I want to hear Freebird. You just drop Freebird in the middle it. of it? And I'll play it. I have i uh... I'll be nice enough to play it. No, I'm like, sure. If I, you know, if I have it, then yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll be sure to play it. And as far as bad requests, I've never had you know a single bad request in the six to seven years I've been a DJ. Not You're long. very lucky, sir. <laughs> you got, Hunter, you had to buy me a lottery ticket then, because you're 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 way better off than I am. You got more luck. <laughs> and the couple did say I was the life of the party, and I kept the party alive. There you go. New I mean, gig luck coming soon, <laughs> real quickly. New gig luck coming soon from you. Um, yeah, and later this month, I'm having a, um, a, I'm, I'm DJing a baby shower for one of my cousins, and it's going to be go. Halloween. So I'm going to be playing go. a lot of rock, rock and roll, a lot of, like, family-friendly Halloween stuff, a lot of toddler stuff. Woo! There you <laughs> go. So, Mr. Dixon, I know, again, before, I know you use an app for requests and stuff like that. Um, again, how do you handle that when you see the requests come through? And you go through the what people say. Hey, I want this song or that song. How do you handle that? How do you get that uh, that balance there? Uh, it depends on what I'm doing and where I'm trying to go. Um, sometimes, if I'm at a certain point and the request fits in what I'm doing, I'll play it right away. But if it doesn't, 
I tend to try to work my way to it. Or a lot of times uh, lately, I've gotten to a certain groove and I don't even get to it till like an hour or two later. But if it's a song like uh, someone comes and say, oh, you didn't play my song. And I'll look at it and see what it is. I might play it during downtime, like when we clean up. So they at least get a chance to hear it. Because that's what I ended up doing with the wedding I did a couple of weeks ago. Because there was a lot of stuff that they put down, but it kind of like really didn't fit. I couldn't, I just couldn't fit it in, but I was able to still play it at some point. So they can't say I didn't play it. But if it's a bad request, I get that a lot where it's always one person in a crowd that wants their style of music or a certain song right then. But the dance floor is, you know, dictating in my request list is dictating something else. And then I, I just either ignore them or tell them, remember, they're paying me. You're not. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, sometimes well people said. can be okay. come up go, hey, I want you to play this, play this. Or like uh, Fred said, hey, play this song next. And your dance floor is packed. Or like what Brentley had, people are out there, you know, singing and dancing and having fun. People trying to get different songs. Or like what Matt, what Matt had, the couple is literally five feet away from him, singing on top of their lungs. Another guy could says, hey, change the genre of the music all the way over to another genre. And, you know, it, it, it's one of the things that we don't want to do that and upset the floor. We, we created this, this dance floor and there's people out there having fun. We don't want to destroy that. And again, filtering through it. You know, again, sometimes it, we don't always get what we want. And that's a, you know, Rolling Stone song is, you know, you can't always get think, what you want. And it's very true in life. Unfortunately, you have a lot of requests. You, you can't play every single request. You know, either it doesn't fit or it, you, you don't have time to it. Um, or you get people come up with the last song. I had a girl on Saturday. Uh, I had the last song keyed up. She goes, play this song next. She, you know, walks over her phone, goes, hey, play this song next. Play this song next on my phone. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, last song's been played. She's like, well, make this the last song. But like, no, the couple already picked it. Oh, well, can I pick the last song? No. <laughs> My couple already picked it. <laughs> Your friends who invited you here already picked the song. <laughs> so, Sean, on you down there, I know you're having a little internet problems. That's why I was trying to let you get stabilized a little bit. Um. Down there in the great state of Georgia or up in up in Wisconsin, either way you look at it, when you take requests, how do you handle that? How do you handle those requests? Yeah, so, I mean, to start, I use DJ EP, so guest request function built into it. So when I go for my consultations, I always tell my couples, hey, use this link, send it out to your guests. Let me see what your guests are trying to vibe to the night of, because that really helps me kind of plan ahead of time for it. Um, night of, I don't use paper. I used to use Ask the DJ, um, but too many times the request would come in like an hour later in that. Uh, so I quit using that and just old classic way, come up, ask for it. If it's good, I'll fit it in somewhere. If not, I'll tell you I'll play it, and it's probably never going to get played. Okay, so uh, Nickelback, yay or nay? I, I get down with Nickelback. I, I had a wedding last week. They're huge Creed fans. So there's like six Creed songs on the must playlist, and uh, I went in. I don't remember which Creed song it was, but I went in. I went in from a Creed song into a Nickelback, and <laughs> my bad. Oh, my not just me. Not just me. Not just me. Oh, you're you're gonna get the you're gonna get the DJ horn now. Not just me. You're gonna get the DJ horn now. I'll put a dollar in the swear jar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get that out of the post. Or shame. You, you're gonna get the DJ oh, horn no. now. You're gonna be like just like Matt. You and Matt both now on the bad boy list, man. Uh, but you know, it's for it's first just, time I slipped up. I'm usually good about that. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. But you, you got you you got you got to remember one thing is that you know people were requesting songs. You know, we want to make our customers happy. We want to make the clients happy. The the reception is about. You know more of the client of the people there a little bit more. It's a celebration, and it's a thank you to them coming to the wedding. But also, you have to balance that with what the couple want to have. And again, you have a, a couple who likes 
Creed or whatever band or EDM or whatever thing they want, you have to balance that with what the people are going to want. And you got to look at the age. What age are they? You see mostly older folks. Like my wedding on Friday was, it was 35 people. It was mostly older people, people like, you know, 40s, 50s, and 60s. It was, you know, the couple were a little older couple. They were in their late, late 30s. So we look at that, you know, the music is different than my wedding on Saturday because on Friday, there was no, like, really hip-hop or anything like that. It was, you know, on Saturday, you know, um, I, well, I, I played uh, I played a couple hip-hop songs because Grim wanted them. So, you know, again, clean versions, but still, you know, you're, you're, I'm playing stuff that, you know, it'll be for a little more for a younger set, some in their 20s, which that's what they are. They're, 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 they're mid-20s. So it's, it's stuff you have to look at, have to balance that. And that's a big, huge thing. And then I'm glad that you sit down with your couples and 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 had them kind of figure out a little bit uh, of what you want to do. But also, you know, the other thing I look at is that I want, as a DJ, I want to be able to have freedom to do what I need to do to have people dance. And, you know, I, I'm sure you do the same thing. And you're, you're just at a conference that you're, you know, you're the voice over the microphone system and over this PA system announcing things. But, you know, when you, uh, when you do that kind of stuff, you make those announcements and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's one of the things you want people to pay attention. And it's one of the thing I try to do with music is people pay attention to the music and it, again, follow this path. Well, I, I'm sure you try to do it, Sean. I, I know Brentley does it. I know Matt does it. I know Jordan Taylor do it. Cause I've seen their pictures. Uh, I know Dwayne does it a lot and the Hunter does it. And I'm sure you do the same thing. Is that we all feel that we try to make a moment for the photographers to capture or us to capture, at least put it on social media and share that with, you know, the client, and share that with the couple. And it, it, it's it's one of the pathways, you know, one of those routes you have to take. And if you can, you know, you could do it and make, you know, a lot of people happy. Um, I'm going to go back to Hunter real quickly. Yeah. And that's why we create gig logs to help create memories and share it to the couple, share a link to the channel. Well, there's there's a difference between gig logs and actually making video for the couple. A gig log is more showcasing you as a DJ what you could do. Yeah, you could share with the couple, but a gig log is more showcasing what you can do for other clients and what you've run into at a wedding versus like I've done now probably what – 20 times in the past two years, including my two weddings, my my wedding from this Saturday and the wedding from Freeze Friday is taking video and taking pictures and stitching it together and making a whole entire video and not, not even saying there's no pictures about me. It's not me in it. It's them, their guests, their family, and stitching it all together and making a video for them and sending them a video of their day, kind of like what Matt was saying with a influencer or social media for the, you know, for the couple hiring social, social media influencers. I'm basically doing that, taking video, the video that we take, the photographs that we take, stitching it together with music that they picked, making a video and showing it. And I actually showed Dwayne the one video I did and it doesn't have us in it. It doesn't show us. You know, it has my it has my name in the front and the end because it bookends and because it's it's we we did it, but it's not us. It's showcasing them. So that's that's the thing is that with a gig log, gig log is for us as DJs to share our knowledge, share information, and share what we're doing with other couples, uh, and you know, a problem solving. But it's not so much for, um, not so much for the couple directly. Uh oh, well, I got I got fire coming in now. Uh. No, kick him. Yes, <laughs> boot him. No, <laughs> Nathan's a cool guy. <laughs> there he yeah, is. He is. Na yes. Nathan is. Hey, Nathan. Uh, Na Nathan's going under weather. He's been battling bronchitis for the past uh, couple weeks, so he is on the meds. Uh, he's on the med. He's on the meds. So he's on a few medications as well. He's on the men. Um. And he wanted to come in tonight. He wanted to stop by and say hi to everyone. So, uh, Fire, what is going on? How are you feeling? Uh, and then uh, great gig lock for the last one, sir. Thanks. Uh, I literally just woke up from randomly falling asleep in my rocking chair. So, 
Well, you look good it's, for just uh, up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had dinner, and I don't know what they put in chicken anymore, but it sure knocked me out. And uh, I've been asleep for like three hours. So again, your body's fighting uh, fighting a, uh, a virus or infection or whatever it is that your medication's helping with. You know, hopefully uh, you feel better uh, much sooner, and you're back at it. You know, doing the gig logs and doing everything out of that. Um, question for you, because this is the question I had for the room: is how do you handle requests? And the reason why I ask this is because when someone comes up here does a request. And if it doesn't fit or it doesn't, it's on the do not playlist. How do you handle that? How do you, how, you know, how do you handle those requests? How do you handle the request period? Uh, well, I had several requests Saturday and I was given a strict playlist to play. Well, not like a playlist. I was given the type of music I could play and it was pretty much, uh, no cuss words, no talking, you know, sexual stuff, no, uh, none of this, none of that. And I want to, you know, <clears throat> I want to play what people want to hear or kids want to hear, but I also want to keep the people that hired me happy. So, um, like a lot of kids were wanting to hear like certain stuff, sexual explicit stuff and, you know, stuff with cuss words in it and stuff. And I'm just like, uh, I can't find a version of that song with, um, you know, that's, that's good or I'm not allowed to play that song. And of course the kids were just like, uh, that's okay. I'm like, ah, if there's something else you want to hear, you let me know if it's good, I'll play it. I don't have a problem with that, but, um, you know, when it go comes down to playing what kids want, I was like, if you want to flip it on your phone and your vehicle on the way home, I don't care what you listen to on the way home, but I cannot play that music here. And they're just like, you know, okay. That's why you yeah, got to get the that's, record pulled. That, that's one of the things you kind of have to watch it sometimes, you know, and you know, people request stuff and it's like, yeah, it doesn't fit the environment. It doesn't fit the environment. Yep. I mean, I'm, you know, I told kids, just said, look, I'm trying to make you, you know, make it a, a fun night, an exciting night, but also try to keep it clean so the the things that are good, which I don't think music, uh, what's the word, influences kids as much as it used to, at least some kids. Um, I mean, when I listen to lyrics of songs, I don't think, oh, uh, that sounds awesome. Let's go do this or let's go do that or let's go do something that's probably not – so illegal or legal or illegal, whichever it is, but you know, and that's just because the yes. song says it, yeah, it doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but there is some kids out there that do listen to that kind of music and it influences their thoughts and influences their, you know, things where, oh, wow, yeah, that sounds like, like awesome. Let's go do drugs or let's go do this or yeah. Oh, mayhem. Man, it's like, so yeah. you're, you're Here's the other big question of the night burning. Do you play Nickelback? Um, so apparently Nickelback isn't as good in my area as it used to be. Like I used to love Nickelback. Well, I mean, I still do, but I played, what was the name of the song I played? And all I heard was skip. I'm like, you guys don't like Nickelback. Like what the heck? I played uh, I Want It That Away from Backstreet Boys, and y'all sung along with it. So, like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. Kids don't know Nickelback. Do what? Kids don't know Kids Nickelback. Kids don't know Nickelback. That's, oh. that's like a 30-plus year and up kind of thing. Anybody below that, they never trended again. Like, Backstreet Boys trended again because they went on tour and uh, – you know, it's boy band type stuff, but did nobody else watch the documentary that came out about this? No, nobody watched that stupid documentary besides <laughs> you. So good. <laughs> I, I always That's why I started back. feeling bad for it, but I was like, maybe they're not that bad. I watched I watched, so I watched a YouTube video about like being so mean. <laughs> people just love to hate them, but they're not not talented. It's just generic, boring music. Oh, but it's definitely. Good. That's what the documentary <laughs> is about. That's about what it's about. They're generic, boring music. <laughs> but Matt, look at their photograph. 
Look at that. Look at this photograph. Oh my God. No. <laughs> oh, oh, those memes were great. Or how you remind me of that. Well, I'm yeah. To... I, I, I think Nathan's going to cut his hair and change his name. <laughs> yes, I'm crowing Nickelback uh, <laughs> lyrics. He's going to trade his life before she okay. Yep. <laughs> He is. Yeah. See, Matt's doing it never now, too. Matt's yeah, doing it now. Matt's it that's the lyrics. Never, yeah, never made I mean, it as never, Yeah, never made it as a wise man. Never, you know, it's, just so, it's, just so, it's just so far away from that, you know? It's it's just so far away. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. What is this show? What is this show now? <laughs> never, never give up when you're looking for a diamond in the roof. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. This yeah. is how you remind me. This is how you remind yeah. me. This is how you remind me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think next week should be everything that everyone says should be a lyric from a song. Yeah. Oh. You, oh. you really but want to do like that? <laughs> oh. Do what? what was it? Was that Bradley? Don't don't do me like that. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Bradley would be like Bradley would be like uh, doing all these stuff from like WAP and. Everything like that. I don't cook. I don't don't, what, no, 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 no. Don't leave me in the cold rain and snow, please. <laughs> DJ Brantley. You I know, I really that. wonder where you are tonight. <laughs> uh, and I could recite bluegrass lyrics until you guys turn blue in the face. <laughs> Mr. Brantley, I have been watching a few of your older gig log videos. And I must say, your, uh, your setup and the way you do things... Uh, you you kick butt out there. Let's put it that way. Thank you. What about me? Thank you very much. What about me? Well, about me? okay. You... When when you got so many people that you uh, that's been on this show oh, and God. you've been had the time to look at their YouTube and look at their stuff, and then you get hooked on someone, and it's like, oh, I don't nah. have a YouTube. <laughs> I keep you telling guys, you guys, you need to get one. Just... This, this is Bradley. We this actually Bradley took videos. videos of our last. <laughs> Uh, I will, yeah, that's a I, plus. I'm doing quick clips because yeah. I don't have the GoPro. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna credit Sean on this one. Is we went and bought a gimbal because of Sean, so <laughs> and he is right. Gimbals make a difference. Pocket so, three is great. My last gig log. I don't know if you all noticed. I did. I did do some of my no copyright music, but yeah, there, there is some of the normal music that I did play throughout that video, and I'm gonna start integrating more of the actual music I'm playing in it, you know, more and more. I've just, you know, honestly, the gig logs that I watch, like the ones that I've watched from Rick Webb, where he does a homecoming dance or a prom, he'll show his setup and he'll show, you know, kind of the group. And then he just, he just shows the songs that he plays. I honestly don't watch that. I like to see the setup. I like to see the crowd. And then after I, See that? I'm just like, okay. I like Skip. to watch. I like to watch the poor choices Rick Webb makes when he plays music. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, the cringiest. It's the cringiest songs. I'm just like, why are you playing Lion King at a wedding? Like, there's so many just and like A B C D E F U. Like that song trended for a week. Like, why are you still playing that? Some of his choices are, and then Josie's on a vacation. Well, like it's the same. It's it's just bad. Like it's so cringy even my girlfriend was like this is so cringy like i would be embarrassed to be him like i think his text his people that work with him are just like in the corner like oh my god what is this guy doing because he's got some talented djs but like when he goes out and shows his stuff it's just like it's just like why some of the stuff he plays i'm just why man i i gotta say though everybody's different and and i'm glad all of us djs are different we're all not the same we all don't do the same stuff because honestly if we all did the same thing who would agree that that would be kind of boring like oh yeah. every dj is the same yeah. like that's why everyone when they search for a dj for their special day or their their homecoming or their prom they look for who's different okay this dj brings this this dj does this this dj just does moving head and uplights this dj doesn't even do moving heads this guy just does uplights this guy does the old style trussing and does the big u-shape like i do and brings crap ton loads of lights and and just makes it look like a club style we want that guy 
You know, there's people that want the stuff that, you know, DJs used to do back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s and 80s. But there's some Fine DJs that don't. For everybody. Yeah, I mean, like if I was going to pick a DJ, would I pick a DJ that, like, how I am? Uh, depends on what type of, like, atmosphere I was going or what kind of theme. Like, when I asked the school to book me, I said, what's your theme? They said, neon rave party. And I was like, I got you. So we'll bring in a bunch of uplights. Uh, you guys are going to probably do neon colored stuff. And I said, yep. Or not uplights. We'll bring in a bunch of black lights. Uh, we'll bring in, they said they wanted something to feel like a concert atmosphere. I said, okay, crowd blinders. I got you there. So like, cause you know, a concert you go, you have crowd blinders. So I I've got those. So, um, you know, I kind of listened to what the customer wanted, and a lot of people would say, you know, what I put out last Saturday was overkill. Um, I mean, yeah, a little, I'll, on a little bit of stuff. There was actually more lighting I brought that I didn't use just because, you know, and a lot of this lighting that I'm using is these companies that are sending me lights they want me to show them at a review and it's like okay well i'm not going to be able to use this light for a while but i can use it with a bigger setup so i'll just throw it in i'll show the company hey here's your light with a bunch of other lights it's okay to go. say no i tell sheds no all the time i'm like i'm not a gear review channel and i have no use for this light I, I understand, Matt, and that's that's fine. I like free um, stuff, though. <laughs> I, I do like free stuff. And the stuff, you know, I, I think of this in my way. I don't know if you all can see my deep freeze sitting over here. I've got two lights over there that I have yet to unbox because I have been sick. But um, actually, I've been waiting two, two months for them because they sent them and sent them by boat instead of plane. I don't, I don't, I don't know why, but they finally did show up. Because well, it's um, cheaper than fl uh, flying it. Stuff, yeah, the stuff that I do get, um, if I don't like it, I sell it. Or I give it to a, a, a DJ or a kid or somebody that's unfortunate that doesn't have the money that, that is trying to do something. I'm like, hey, look, you're trying to DJ or you're trying to be able to go out and, and do parties for people. You don't have the money yet. Here's a couple free lights. Go knock yourself out. And they're like, oh, well, I'll give you some money. I'm like, look, it did not cost me a dime for these lights. I'm actually making money on the video. So knock yourself out. Yeah, it's like um, when uh, it's like when DJ Mike and Mike gave me the sound switch. I didn't pay anything. He just gave it to me for, for free. He paid well, for it. Mikey, well, Mike, awesome. Mikey Mike's cool like that. That's why he sent it to yeah. you. Yeah. He knew you so there's there's it actually like a, it. No, there's we actually a no. You probably didn't pay for it. There's actually a DJ that is just north of me about an hour, and I've given him a few things. And the crazy part is he's an older DJ. He's older than me. He's in his 40s. And he's also a meteorologist at our local news station oh. in Champaign. So, and his his DJ name is DJ Doppler. So how, how cool is that? Awesome. Awesome. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So, so, I'm going to try to get with him. So, so, Mr. Dixon, really quickly, um, going back um, to you, and again, I know you use uh, DJ, was it DJ by request, your app? Uh, request now. Request now. Do, have you ever run into problems with it, glitches or anything like that with the, the, the app? Um, not really. No more than one girl has said she sent me a bunch of requests, and then she showed, showed it on my on her phone. And it showed that it sent, but I didn't see it. You didn't receive so it. So that's the only time. Other, yeah, only other than that, mine's worked fine. So I just have to remember when I announced it to keep my phone open to, <laughs> to see them. But then, and then at the end, I got to remember to end. So it send a thank you um, message and all that. Yeah, and that, that's, again, everyone does different things for requests and stuff like that. And that's, you know, tonight I, I wanted to go through it because, again, uh, you know, it, it started off with, you know, what happened to me on Saturday and uh, want to see how other people handle their requests, how they handle, you know, if it's not a good request or if it's something that's restricted or what to do. And it, it, it's, it's, it's always good to also know how people take requests because, again, you have Matt, you know, and uh, Brentley is like, you know, tell me what it is. You have... You know, uh, Taylor, she'll put it on the side on virtual DJ. And uh, 
on the uh, autoplay area, you know, so she can pull it and drag it back over. You have Sean that uh, will uh, do other things on his app, and you know, DJ Fire uses crayon. No, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but you know, he he, hey, you know, he takes. It was it was down to that this weekend. We were getting so many requests so quickly. Uh, um, we literally went and got pen and paper and started writing stuff down so I could get the input in. It, it literally happened. Yeah. It wasn't there, crown, there you go. Was pen. There you go. And then you have Hunter. Hunter looks for it on his uh on his uh tablet. I'm not his tablet on his uh controller. If he has it, he'll play it. If he doesn't have it, he can't play. He can't play something he doesn't have. He can't he's not he's not he you know, not sound bad. Hunter may look like a famous wizard, but he is doesn't do magic and can't make songs up here. So like all of us, oh. we can't just make songs, snap our finger and make them up here. Unless you go with stream unless you go with streaming, you have an internet connection, which ninety nine percent of the time I don't. So I got to have everything on this high five. That's that's why having your own media and having your own music, I feel it's important. Um, so with that said, wow, we went through a whole entire hour very quickly. Wow. And it's always fun. Uh, I want to thank you guys all for going through tonight and doing everything. And I think tonight we're going to have, actually, uh, I'm going to have Nathan take us out tonight uh, for closeout. Oh, I feel I feel special. Let's just hope my voice doesn't cut out because it'll be like one of those deals where, oh, it's buffering. Nope, we just lost sound. Oh, gosh. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you guys enjoyed. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you drop a like. That helps the channel here more than anything in the world. And uh, share with your friends. And uh, we'll hope to see you back next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Good night, everyone.